This is morning prayer on Tuesday, the 3rd of August. And I'm using the uh, acclamation of Christ at the dawning of the day. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. May Christ, the true, the only light, banish all darkness from hearts and minds. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of his salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As the dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you've made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And that prayer was after Lancelot Andrews, a 1626 prayer. We're looking at the uh, Gospel of Mark at the moment, the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark, uh, and considering the nature of the Gospel of Mark before we read from uh, the Gospel itself. Uh, These are the words of Etienne Charpentier talking about Mark's community, the community to which Mark was writing. It is generally accepted that the first Gospel was written in Rome about AD 70 and takes up the preaching of Peter. Around about uh, 110, the bishop Papias was already writing, Mark was an interpreter of Peter and wrote down carefully what he remembered, though not in order, what was said or done by the Lord. He had in fact neither heard the Lord nor followed him, but later on, as I said, he followed Peter. The latter formulated his teachings as was needed, uh, though without making an ordered composition of the oracles of the Lord. The indications that we can note in his work fit this tradition very well. His community was made up of former Gentiles. Mark is obliged to translate Aramaic words and to explain certain Jewish customs. We can understand the importance attached to the evangelization of Gentiles, and it is no chance that the finest confession of faith occurs on the lips of the Roman centurion at the foot of the cross. This community was threatened with persecutions. The faith which Mark presents is not a quiet faith. It comes up against opposition and is forced to take risks. That fits in very well with what we know of the Church of Rome under Nero. Peter suffered martyrdom in AD 64. So this is a community dispersed among the Gentiles, as Peter wrote in his letter. So let's read from the Gospel of Mark, and this is Mark 1, uh, the first chapter, starting at verse 14. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in a boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat and the hired men and followed him. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. 
to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come to pray. And firstly, a prayer of Erasmus, round about uh, 16th century. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth and the life. Let us not stray from you who are the way, nor distrust your promises who are the truth nor rest in anything but you who are the life. For beyond you there is nothing to be desired, neither in heaven nor in earth. Amen. And the great Franciscan prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is faith, where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And another prayer in the Franciscan tradition, this one uh, attributed to Francis of Assisi. May the power of your love, O Lord, fiery and as sweet as honey, so absorb our hearts as to withdraw them from all that is under heaven. Grant that we may be ready to die for love of your love as you died for love of our love. Amen. And that brings us to the collect for this day. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.